quickly proving that Todge and Nud, but mostly Todge, has direct connection with the CIA. I was told on Twitter by an American who does their research very, very well uh, that Marie Ressa and Renee de Resta, yes, their names, uh, confirmed CIA, CIA assets and were Aspen Institute commissioners at the time. Maria Ressa, funnily enough, was in Colombia just recently on the stage with Nut and Todge at that university event. So this confirms CIA are working directly with Nut and Todge. And I have CC'd Duchess of Narcissus and uh, the Royal Grift. Let's have a look here. This is Maria Ressa, the one in the middle with the short hair. Mark Ben Cyber says Maria Ressa is a CIA's top asset in, in the AstroTurf's NED funded independent media in the Philippines. Maria Ressa to chair World Movement for Democracy Steering Committee. And here is uh, Nut, Todge and Maria Deressa, surprisingly, in Colombia. Why would she be the CIA head of anything in Philippines if she's in Colombia with Nut and Todge and hasn't really left the whole Aspen CIA front? Uh, Renee de Resta was um, in my last video. She was a part of that rewired um, chat where Todge talks about J6, funnily enough. Um, and she's meant to be for uh, Stanford University at this point. But, you know, she isn't. She's CIA. About to show you the recording again of um, Renee DeResto. Just have a look at how different she looks. Next to the video, I will show you in a minute. Let's go back because I want you to see. Oh, they're not going to show me. One report in and of itself um, will change the con. Yeah, don't care. I don't think but you can see it there. One report in and of itself um, will change the conversation. Yeah. I don't want to hear this guy again. Getting more people willing. So let me search for it again. Just so it's a little more um, fresh. See the, you see there? News into opinion based. Okay, that was just crap. See there. This uh this post by second for first. I've never known them before, but I've just found this post. This is a deep state operative who worked for the CIA, Renee De Resta, aka Deep State De Resta, who was exposed in today's Twitter files. So she was a part of the Twitter files. So she was a part of J6 under the falsetto, or falsetto, the facade, sorry, of um, of Aspen with Todge. So he is directly working with CIA and FBI. Gotcha. And what I really want to hammer home is that I am a mom and I have a choice. Except that these people are taking my choice away because they are making my public schools and my preschool options progressively worse and worse and more dangerous. And as a member of society who stands up here in front of you and says, I vaccinate my goddamn baby, it's to keep all of us safe. It's for community immunity. And that is what SB 277 is about. It's not about individual choice. And what I really want to hammer home. There you go. Need I say more? 
the rest are um, voted for Hillary in 2016. Hillary has been quoted um, that she works for the mothership, the Council of Foreign Relations, CFR. CFR or Council of Foreign Relations is a branch of Chatham House in um, in the UK. It's no surprise. Or oh, is it a surprise to you? Uh, and um, they direct all policy, um, direct your intelligence agencies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They determine your current state and your future state. And that's why she calls it the mothership. And um, CFR was created, or was help, help was created and helped by obviously British. Um, but the Cecil or Cecil Rhodes Society um, and all of their main operatives. Here's the rester again, as now a foreign influence and social media new knowledge research director. The same person who was just an everyday civilian fighting for vaccines. Here is Deresta again, again looking very, very different. We're trying to improve the ability to find these narratives earlier. That's why the proactive detection is so important, because if you can find them before they go viral, you can give fact checkers a chance to uh, to, to come up with the correct information to, um, to sort of ascertain the truth and put that out there. Um, Doesn't that sound like what Twitter is doing now with um, correcting our information? So they they using AI or whatever software she's actually putting forward to detect, so she's a CIA, she's saying that they're correcting Twitter information as false or not false, or, or true. She's saying she's um, in charge of that, which is a part of social media design, is it not? <laughs> uh, see uh, how it's all connected? Activist Reid Hoffman, for example, is a major Haley supporter. Reid Hoffman is the founder of LinkedIn. He's a friend of Jeffrey Epstein's. He was a visitor to Meadow Island, in fact. He's also the guy who funded E. Jean Carroll's sexual assault case against Donald Trump. Reid Hoffman is a Democratic mega donor. In 2020, he gave a million dollars to David Brock's American Bridge Pack. That's a group designed to physically harass Republican candidates. Hoffman's money has also helped to prop up the authoritarian governor of California, Gavin Newsom, as well as many others on approximately the same team. So what's interesting is this cycle, Reed Hoffman is all in on Nikki Haley. His cash has paid for one of the most shameless propaganda operations in memory. So the very same people who told you four years ago that Joe Biden was a jovial, moderate grandfather is trying to return America to normal. Those same people are now trying to sell Nikki Haley as a conservative woman of principle. Reid Hoffman, help find new knowledge of d Resta. <laughs> same woman, same woman in Aspen connected to Todd, um, connected to the Twitter files, supposedly um, runs this, this company um, they are a part of election disinformation. Documents show Center for American Progress paid for paid to for Hamilton sixty eight dashboard caught spreading Russian disinformation. You can have a look at that um, link yourselves. Searches are fucking amazing. Not wanting to be outdone by playing the victim, Stanford and Renee DeResta, wink, wink, simultaneously filed an amicus brief asserting that their own rights would be infringed if the injunction against the government were allowed to stand, again citing public health. The district court's injunction burdens Amici's First Amendment amendments 
amendment rights, sorry, while at the same time supporting a a foreign duke and prince who is saying that their your first amendment rights are um terrible. <laughs> Significantly burdens Amitra's ability to communicate with the government on matters of exceptional public concern. Just sounds like collusion, doesn't it? It just sounds like, well, why? Why should you even be involved in the government's concerns at all? Does this shit never ends? First question, just so folks at home understand, because this is a process here to get a sense of how broad Russian influence was. And in effect, investigators need the help of the social media companies to identify some of these bad actors. What did Facebook, Twitter and Google not share or not share quickly enough so folks at home understand? Sure. So what they provided was a collection of content that they attributed to the Internet Research Agency. So for Facebook, that looked like posts and memes. And for Instagram, the images. For uh, Google, it provided ads and YouTube content. Um, each of them provided something very different. So with Twitter, we actually had probably the most complete picture. They had metadata, which is information about the account. So using that metadata, we can see that uh, Russian trolls registered Twitter handles uh, that pretended to be American, even having American news property names like mm -hmm. Baltimore News, uh, to Russian IP addresses with Russian device IDs. So you could see using that metadata, that information that's not typically public, uh, how the companies identified what accounts were <laughs> Russian and what weren't. Uh, with some of the social platforms like Facebook and Instagram, we had information about the engagement so we could see how many people... By the way, she's literally telling you what Todd... The information that Todd has as well, and that's shared between her and Todd, CIA and Todd. <laughs> Foreign interference. Liked it or shared it or reacted to it, but what we couldn't see was any. We could see that there were thousands of comments. Um, 4 million, I think, <laughs> comments across the entire data set, we couldn't see anything that people were saying. So when we get at what impact did this have, which is the question that people really want an answer to, that's yeah. where we still have some gaps. Uh, you want to know how far, how many people reacted, how far the influence went. Did, did, did the companies give you any explanation when they weren't supplying what, what would seem to be <laughs> fairly simple information? Well, the reason I think that they didn't supply it was probably... IP addresses with Russian device IDs. So you could see using that metadata, that information that's not typically public, uh, how the companies identified what accounts were Russian and what weren't. Uh, with some of the social platforms like Facebook and Instagram, we had information about the engagement so we could see how many people liked it or shared it or reacted to it. But what we couldn't see was... Any so they have full control over your social media, much like what Barkjack said about the some se seemingly the monarchy also having the very same control supposedly under an investigation either way you've got todge in the u.s uh partaking in this it's foreign interference it's treachery it's high treason and we could see that there were thousands of comments um four million, I think, comments across the entire data set, we couldn't see anything that people were saying. So when we get at what impact did this have, which is the question that people really want an answer to, that's yeah. where we still have some gaps. Yeah, you want to know how far, how many people reacted, how far the influence went. Did, did the companies give you any explanation when they weren't supplying what, what would seem to be fairly simple information? Well, the reason I think that they didn't supply it was probably user privacy. If you're sharing comment data, you'd have to anonymize. So the information is private, but she's accessing it to control narratives, to then censor um, our posts, to shadow ban people that are speaking the truth, like myself, like you. It. Uh, that said, I think that they responded to the Senate's uh, request for information, not to mine. The Senate was who provided uh, the researchers with the data set. So my understanding... The Senate Intelligence Committee gave her the user data? Question mark. 
is the Senate reached out and said, can you provide us with information about influence operations on your platform <laughs> starting in around 2015? Uh, some of the companies really sort of stuck to the letter of the request. She's been doing it. Did she say she's been doing it since 2015? The Senate reached out and said, can you provide us with information about influence operations on your platform starting in around 2015? Oh, uh, no. Some of the companies really sort of stuck to the letter of the request and others like Twitter provided a much more broad um, I see. collection of content. So, so we're, we're, we're more than two years out, obviously, since the election took place. Uh, but, but it struck me that, that your company. Do they have my contact details and where I live? As an Australian, not even in America. Do they know exactly where I live and what I'm doing right now? Your company said there are still more Russian accounts, or likely that there are more Russian accounts that the social media companies ha have yet to identify. H how many more do you believe and why? I think it's really hard to put a number on it because, as you'll see, if you um, if you look in the report, one of the things that we show is, um, you know, nobody likes looking at graphs, but unfortunately, graphs are the best way to show this. Um, kind of graphs of where they turned their accounts on. And so you actually see them creating accounts over the three-year operation. They didn't just stop. After the 2016 election, if anything, on Instagram in particular, they really ramped up. Uh, if you look at some of the Instagram content, there's still some residual stuff on the platform. Some of it is dormant. Some of it appears to potentially be related to uh, to other accounts that are that are still active. One of the challenges is I, I don't think that we can expect that Russia is going to give this up anytime soon. No. What we saw in the indictment from Eastern Division back in, I believe it was late October, was that they had actually increased their budget. You don't increase mm. your budget if you're planning on shutting down yeah. operations. So yeah, this as, is going as, to be... As Intel a officials have said to me frequently, if, if it works if from it works, Russia's point of view... <laughs> <laughs> oh... Yes, that's right. And what I really want to hammer home is that I am a mom and I have a choice. Except that these people are taking my choice away because they are making my public schools and my preschool <laughs> options progressively worse and worse and more dangerous. And as a member of society who stands up here in front of you and says, I vaccinate my God. Well, she's now a member of society. Nothing more, nothing less. Go figure damn baby it's to keep all of us safe it's for community and unity and that is what sb 277 is about it's not about individual choice yeah! <laughs> i love this i love this oh well oh well oh well oh <laughs> Uh, oh, it's just too much. You're surrounded by psyops. Uh, I'm so. Wait, wait, wait. Um, let me pause that. Oh, they're going to zoom in. Yep. Renee DeResta, who has advised Congress on the use of bots and fake accounts to manipulate social media at her home in California. I wonder if she pays visits. Do you see this is exactly, exactly what happened in Australia? It happened in the US. These fake firms run by intelligence to uh, change your policies and then conduct psyops. Incredible.
<laughs> there she is. Namely, Liberty, Liberty, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Amazing. Amazing. Made me emotional, to be honest with you. I'm not even American, but you can see this playing out everywhere. Renee Duress, aka Deep Steep, said Duress, writes policy for Elon Musk. A symmetry of the giving pledge. So they're all connected. You see, that was all that social hate campaign thing that Todd was um, affiliated with. It's all the same. Twitter baited everyone to come back on the platform, which is, you know, treachery, foreign interference. Like, I, I keep saying it, but it's, this is what's happening. Twitter baited everyone to come back on the platform so you can all be tracked again. Elon Musk quoted the unhinged censorship queen Renee DeResta right out of the gate. Him selecting the WEF NBC as CEO would be of no surprise. Twitter files wasn't some big exposure, it was a full disclosure. Nothing has changed. The government portal is still open. I, I want to give Renee credit on because people quote it all the time and not always to the person who created the concept. A wonderful phrase. There's freedom of speech as a concept that we all are orienting ourselves towards that doesn't translate to freedom of reach. And what that gets to, and then I'm going to let Renee explain her own concept more in depth, is that we can't have these conversations in total isolation from an understanding. Isn't that what Rashad Robinson said in my last video? I'm, I swear that was exactly what he said about freedom of speech and freedom of reach or some sort of like that there needs to be controls in place for freedom of speech, that there's a limitation and a wall. This is all just manipulation. Just absolute fluff. Of these platforms as having the power to supercharge the availability of narratives and individual perspectives to the world. There's one thing here that I, I want to give Renee credit on because people quote it all the time. and not I feel like she's changed her identity at least five times. 